Oh, welcome back, everybody. Those of you who have come back, if this is your first time, welcome. Appreciate you visiting. We are two Christian gamers who love to talk about scripture. We are not trained theologians. Uh, although when you hear Jim talk, you probably think, are you sure he's not a trained theologian? And then when you hear me talk, you go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I could see, I could see that. And you know what I say to that? Yeah, you're right. Um, we are on chapter seven of the LBC, a London Baptist Confession of 1689 in modern English via the Founders Ministry. That's the website we're on. Uh, chapter seven is God's Covenant. So that assumes we've already been through chapters one through six. Mr. Jim, would you like to pray since, sir? Correct. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful day here in South Carolina. Nice and cool. Fall is coming. We look forward to that. And we uh, thank you for this time to uh, go through the LBC and speak about you and the church. And your son, Jesus Christ, bless this time, be glorified, bless those who may hear it, bless us as we learn more about you, Jesus, precious name, amen. Amen. So on that last, the last um, podcast or the last upload, did it cut my whole prayer off part of it? The two seconds, 10, 15 seconds? It wasn't the last one. It was just one that popped up. And uh, you didn't get you didn't get all the way to your to your uh, was it Ephesians five? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get to that part, so it just kind of stopped. Okay. In mid sentence. Yeah. All right then. I'll have to do a better job of editing. That I I am. I downloaded uh, another editor called DaVinci. Revolve or something like this resolve DaVinci resolve. I'm gonna try that one. That one's free too. The one I'm using through Windows Clip champ or something like that. It's pretty intuitive. It's pretty easy, you know for my mind for my brain So I like it because it's easy easy, but it is always crashing Without a doubt I will have to close it two or three times or it'll close itself and say relaunch so and that DaVinci Resolve is the uh, is more. So I'm gonna have to. It's gonna take me more time to learn it. But yeah, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna try switch over. And see what happens. Okay. Yeah, it probably probably lost about thirty seconds. You know, at the most off of the uh, the end of your prayer. So. Okay. I was listening to it and just kind of stopped. And I went, "Well, what happened?" So, you know, I replayed, I pushed it back a little bit, the bar, and uh, it stopped in the same place again, so. Yeah, I don't blame that on the software. Just, that was probably a mistake on my part. It was just over. Yeah. I couldn't bring it back. <laughs> so, anyway, no biggie. That's the only one I've heard that that happened, so. Okay. All right. Well, let's get this started then. This is chapter seven, God's covenant, paragraph one. Though rational creatures are responsible to obey God as their creator, the distance between God and these creatures is so great that they could never have attained the reward. They could never have attained the reward of life except by God's voluntary condescension. He has been pleased to express this through a covenant framework. Mm, that's interesting. Mr. Jim. All right, we got a couple of verses here. Uh, Luke 17, 10. So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. Job 35, 7 and 8. If you are righteous, what do you give to him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness concerns a man like yourself and your righteousness a son of man. Okay. 
So rational creatures. So basically, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to reread it for my own edification. Yeah. But you, go ahead. Go ahead. Though rational creatures are responsible to obey God as their creator, the distance between God and these creatures is so great that they can never have attained the reward of life except by God's voluntary condescension. So, yeah. Right. So because of the fall, we've lost our ability to basically reach God and we, we can't obey him perfectly. So it's up to him to reach to us and, uh, Basically, that was through the covenant of grace, which is, you know, Jesus Christ. He had to do it for us, and then we get the benefits of what he did. So without that, we we don't have a chance. Um, if you look at it, it'll talk about it a little bit farther, but uh, if you look at Luke 17, uh, the context of that... The uh, <laughs> first time I heard this or I read this parable started started uh, verse seven. All right, hold on. Unless you want me to do it either way. Uh, go ahead. I'm okay. Uh, I'm there. Go ahead. Well, so he basically is telling he's telling basically a a parable or whatever. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field come at once and recline at table will he not rather say to him prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink and afterward you will eat and drink does he thank the servant because he did what he was com what was commanded so you also when you have done all that you were commanded say we are unworthy servants we have only done what was our duty so basically you got this uh you know homeowner this landowner and he's got he's got servants right Yeah uh -huh. <clears throat> and you know the servant the servant comes in from the field all dusty and dirty and he's been working hard all day and the master's like uh, okay go get cleaned up and prepare my food <laughs> Serve me my dinner and then you can eat, you know, and the servant's probably like, man, I've been out in the field all day and now I got to, this dude's mean, you know, but, and then it, it says, do you even thank your servant? No, because he's just doing what you told him to do. <laughs> so basically he's telling us, don't feel good about just, you know, d doing what you're supposed to do. You know, you're still an unworthy servant. So it's kind of interesting. When first time I read it, I was like, wow, we have nothing to feel good about <laughs> that we did anything that, you know, that's just funny. But, uh, not to you know, which one of you, to, which, which one of you tells your servant, come on, come on and eat. You deserve it. All right. Get cleaned up and feed me my dinner. <laughs> so. Yeah, we did, you know, and then later on we'll talk about how we cannot give anything to, uh, well, I was reading Matthew Henry a little bit, and uh, he says, um, we must be humble in our service to Christ. We cannot merit any favor. We are not our own. God is not indebted to us. God cannot be a gainer by our services and therefore cannot be, a, be made a debtor by them. So God owes us nothing. Even if we do live our whole life in service to him, he still owes us nothing. And he has gained nothing by our service. And for those of us who don't know, who is Matthew Henry? Uh, he was an old, old time Bible commentator and he was really, you know, a lot of people use him. He made it. He wrote a commentary on every book of the Bible. Ooh. I think he was a Puritan, but I'm not positive. I'm going to look him up real quick just so we can get some context on who he is. But uh, this is an update. Obviously, what I read was an updated, uh, updated 
English. Uh, October 1662 through June 1714. So he was, yeah, he was a late, late Puritan. So we're talking, uh, uh, he was British, born in Wales. So anyway, but he is a very famous commentator. Almost every, almost every pastor and theologian has uh, Matthew Henry's commentary. I got this one. This was on the internet, so. Okay. I have the I have one I have one of his commentaries. It's about four or five inches thick. It probably weighs about I don't know fifteen ten ten pounds ten fifteen pounds. It's a huge book on the whole Bible. Dang. But you can buy you can buy individual books or you, like I said I found it on the internet. So basically basically what he's saying is no matter you know what no matter what we do we can't we can't add anything to who God is and He owes us nothing. So we just need to be uh, humble, uh, humble servants, just happy to be in his service that he allows us to be in his service. All right. That last sentence, he has been pleased to express this through a covenant framework. What covenant framework would that be? I believe that's a covenant of grace. You know, since we could not do anything to, we could not obey God, um, the covenant of, you know, covenant of works, uh, Adam failed, right? Yes. And uh, since then, it's pretty much been a, they call, uh, you know, the Israel, the nation of Israel, a covenant of works. But I think all the way, you know, even with Abraham was a covenant of grace. Abraham didn't do anything to deserve to be the father of a nation and all that. But, you know, even the Israelites, you know, you could look at their history and they uh, they disobeyed God almost from the start. And all the way through their history. So the covenant of grace is, is basically just God uh, doing it for us. And even the, even us being servants, you know, in his in his employment, is only because of what Christ did, and uh, I believe that's what they mean by that. Okay. Is that all we have for that first paragraph? Yeah, I believe so. All right. There's a lot more in the next two. All right. I just want to read real quick from uh, I have the the Johnny Mac John MacArthur Study Bible. I just want to read what he says or what the the study portion of that says on Luke seventeen seven through ten. It says the point of this parable was that a slave or servant should expect no special reward for doing what his duty is in the first place. The demanding standards. Christ set may have seemed too high to the disciples, but they re represented only the minimal duties for a servant of Christ. Those who obey are not to think their obedience is meritorious. That's, man, that's kind of, that for me personally, not that I, I think anything is owed to me, but any, maybe I'm thinking about it wrong, even, even that, but any joy I get for it, or maybe that's separate, right? The joy I get from evangelism is different from actually thinking that I should get some kind of reward out of it. You right. think those are two separate things? Like I'm happy to do it, and yeah, it's scary initially. But after the conversation's done, I'm like, oh, that, was, that wasn't as bad as my brain had made it out to, to be. But then also thinking that I should get rewarded for it. You think those are two separate things? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you want people to have what you have, right? Yes, you want sir. people to, um, now you could sense it as a duty. God called me. I think some people, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I think some people have more of an evangelistic bent than others. Mm -hmm. And I think they have uh, more of a gift for it. And some people are not very good evangelists. <laughs> I know some people that I would not want to evangelize me because just because their attitude and just to come on too strong, I think they don't have the gift of evangelism. But 
and it could be partly in your, you know, you feel like you need to do it. It could be something about you, right? Right. But yeah, it's different than saying, hey, I went out and talked to five people today, God. He's like, okay. <laughs> do I owe you something? You know, right. That kind of thing. Yeah. And you're not doing it for that. So, you know, we just want people to have what we have. Right. You know? And the people that evangelize or, you know, you get people that are very legalistic and they're like, hey, you're go- you're doing wrong. You're living the wrong life. You're a sinner and all this stuff. And it's a negative type thing. And we're like, look, look what we have, man. And, you know, it's like Paul- Jesus talks about the treasure. You know, the guy mm-hmm. finds a treasure in a field. He sells everything he has to buy it. Excuse me. We have a treasure, you know, and all we want to do is tell people about it. Right. You want to warn people that, hey, you're going down the wrong path. But but the positive aspect is you can have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I mean, there's nothing better. So back to what you're saying. Yeah, I think part of it is a, you know, you enjoy it. And that's not a bad thing, you know. But you're not going to God saying, okay, uh, you know, I talked to five people today. So, right. Uh, you know, the tell of it, the tell event the televangelists and stuff, you know, and the health and wealth people. And you do this and God's going to give you this. No, he's not. <laughs> There's no guarantee. You know, you send me a hundred dollars and uh, God's going to bless you tenfold. There's no guarantee of that. Or tell me somewhere in the Bible where it says that, you know, so. Right. Um, blessings aren't always financial. It could be anything that nothing, something you haven't even considered as a blessing. So that kind of stuff is man- man- manipulative. It's a uh, coercion, and those people are getting rich off of that stuff. And God will deal with them. But uh, yeah, yeah. So all right, we just can't. We just can't. We just can't think that God owes us anything, and that we do anything that makes Him any better than He already is. Well, thank you very much, sir. All right. Paragraph 2, Chapter 7, God's Covenant. Since humanity brought itself under the curse of the law by its fall, it pleased the Lord to make a covenant of grace. In this covenant, he freely offers to sinners life and salvation through Jesus Christ. On their part, he requires faith in him until they may be saved and promises to give his Holy Spirit to all who are ordained to eternal life to make them willing and able to believe. That's good stuff right there. That's that's. I mean, you could just yeah, remember basically. that whole paragraph and just go around telling people that. Yeah, it basically explains the uh, last sentence of the first paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> Covenant of grace. I'll right, we'll go through a couple of verses here real quick. Genesis two seventeen. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. That is the covenant of works. That's basically the only thing that. You know, all all Adam had to do was take care of the garden, be fruitful, multiply, and don't eat of the tree, which he did. Uh, Galatians 3.10, for all who rely on on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Romans 3.20 and 21, for by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. Romans 8.3, For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. we got the famous John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 6:44 No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. John 3:16 Oh, were you going to keep reading? Go ahead, Jim. No, no. I was just going to say I'm done reading if you want to read something else that's something strikes you. I just want to you had said mentioned something before. For God so loved the world, now does that mean the whole world? Does that mean everybody ever in existence? Did God die for them as well? No. No. 
the world there is talking about. I mean, he loves the world, the world he created, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're talking about the the. Uh, You know, there's that term where the the cross of Christ, the death of Christ, was sufficient for the whole world, but only efficient for the elect. So it was enough to save everybody, but it was only meant for the elect. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's basically what they call the free offer of the gospel, right? We don't know who the elect are, so God does. So people will say, well, whoever means whoever. Well, that's true. Whoever is whoever, but it doesn't mean everyone. <laughs> right. Obviously, whoever believes in Christ will be saved, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's free to that everyone has the same opportunity. So his his sacrifice on the cross was sufficient for everyone just not meant for everyone right it was sufficient to cover the whole sins of everyone who ever lived but it was efficient mm. for the elect okay so you know and you also have you know that's such a that's probably the most famous verse uh you know obviously people that have never read the bible know that verse right right but, uh, you know, there's context to that, too. Um, before that, he's talking about how he's talking to Nicodemus, how he has to be born again. Right. And then. Right. And then he says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. You know, that story back when uh, the Israelites were messing up again and God sent the, you know, the snakes in there and bit a bunch of people and. They put a snake up on a pole, and whoever looked at the pole, at the snake on the pole, uh, was healed. Of course, Christ was going to fulfill that, you know, uh, a thousand, you know, fifteen hundred years later, or whatever. So, uh, so those who did not look at the, you know, said, "Oh, well, that's that thing's not going to help me," or whatever. That snake's not going to help me. Looking at that snake, well, they died. So it's basically the same as. Uh, you know, people here saying, well, that's not going to, you know, faith in Christ isn't going to help me. So, or I don't need it or whatever. I'll be all right. So that kind of sets the context. And then you go after that 317 for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. So basically the world there is uh, he loves his creation. He loves the humans that he created but the only ones that are going to be saved are the ones that have what they call saving, you know, God has shown saving grace to him. We talked about that before, common grace yeah. and saving grace. So before that, he's talking to Nicodemus about being born again, you know, and you can't born again yourself. You know, you can't make yourself born again. Right. And, uh, only God can do that. So, and we're not, you know, they're not using the, that word "world" there in the context of the worldly, the evil worldly system either. God does not love that. So, he's talking about people basically, All right? And his and his creation that he that he created. He loves his creation. The word, uh, I believe, I believe the word there is cosmos, which basically means all of creation. So question, John six forty four. no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. I know we've talked about this before. 
what do we do with those feelings of I've been drawn based on, you know, based, you know, as Christians, right? We've been drawn, but maybe some family members who have not. What do we, what do we do with that? Well, we have to uh, trust that God, you know, in God's plan. I mean, God is perfect. He's righteous and holy. And we don't know, you know, if they've been chosen or not. Maybe they don't show it yet. But right. we, we keep praying. We keep praying that they are. Now, obviously, we can't change anything. We we read earlier in this, uh, in the LBC, that there is a certain number of elect. It cannot be increased and it cannot be decreased. But we don't know who they are. So we keep praying because God told us to. So we just keep, you know, we keep, we keep witnessing. We keep loving. I think loving is more important than witnessing, in my opinion. You can witness someone, like I said earlier, that there are some people that uh, don't go witness to somebody. <laughs> Please don't, because <laughs> they're not going to like the Christ that you offer. <laughs> just because their attitude or whatever, you know. All right. But you can still love somebody, you know, and then people see that love and they're like, hey, uh, there was a f kind of a famous Christian. I can't remember who it was back in the past that. There was a secretary for some reason. I don't think it was his secretary. I'm not sure who. She, but she had such a godly. The only time he saw her, I guess, I don't know if it was when he visited someone or something like that, but she was so godly that it drew him to Christ, you know, and it was just like, I don't think she even ever mentioned. I don't even, I can't remember the whole story, but it was, and this guy turned out to be, you know, some pretty famous guy. So Christian, but it was. Just her godly, just her attitude and everything drew him to Christ, you know. So, but so I think love is a big part of it, you know. We have to witness, obviously, but but love, you know, loving people is is very important. Um, where are we getting? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was a John John six forty four. Right. So, yeah. So, uh. You know, obviously that word draw, there's been debates about that, but that word draw in the Greek means to drag something or to draw water out of a well. Water cannot jump out of a well. You can't stand above the wa with above the well with the bucket saying, Come here, water, come here, water which is arguments that people have given. You gotta lower the bucket into the water and draw that water out. So basically Right, the the water Obviously can't the, jump in the bucket all by itself. Right, so the father has to, you know, the father has given the has given the elect in eternity to the son. So it's the father's work. So, um, You know, if you go on a little farther, verse 45, the last part, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the except he who is from God, which is him. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. So basically, the, it, you know, it's, it's whoever the Father gives to the Son, mm -hmm. basically as a gift. So... We are, you know, we are responsible as human beings to, to respond to the gospel. You know, that's part of the plan. So even though we can't without his, without God uh, bringing, bringing us to life, basically spiritual, spiritual life, we are spiritually dead, even though people talk about spirituality all the time, you know, and, you know, in the context of Hinduism and all this other stuff, but they are most in our natural state. We are spiritually dead. So God right. has to quicken our spirit. And then, uh, then we have to respond. There's no one that's a Christian that has never responded to the gospel. <laughs> you just can't do it until he gives you the ability to do it. So,
if one of the verses on there, I don't think I read it, Ezekiel 36, 26, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So mm. a lot of these prophecies in the Old Testament are pointing toward Christ. And uh, when, when people you... ask about, oh, go ahead. I'll say when you see that in people, because I and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Have you ever have you ever had that example? Have you ever seen that in somebody? Because I know I used to have a really hard heart and I'm amazed at where the Lord has brought me. As far as giving me a new a new heart and a heart made of flesh, because I used to have a huge heart of stone have you seen that being played out in anybody in your life jim or maybe even yourself oh yeah i've seen it in myself and i've seen it in, in others you know that uh i haven't i've heard about it more probably than i've seen it in people's testimonies but i've, I've only seen it a couple times where people just just totally different um from what they were maybe someone i didn't see for a long time and then i saw them and <clears> said, oh you know the guy. You could tell the person was different. Um, it is. It, it is. It is a, a definite change. Mm-hmm. And you can see people that, you know, people that are friends of yours and stuff that they're not. They're not antagonistic toward Christianity, and they might call themselves a Christian, but it doesn't really seem like that. You know, that they are have a concept of Christianity and of God, but it doesn't really seem like it's the right one. So it makes you wonder, you know, they're not bad people or anything, you know, as far as that goes, but, but they just don't seem to have that, whatever you want to call it. They don't seem to have the spirit of God in them. Then that's the kind of people you can talk to and say, Hey, you know, what, uh, what do you think about this? Or, you know, have, you know, uh, ask them about their conversion experience and things like that to see if they've really, uh, you know, they might not have much of a, a passion for the for the word or for church or anything. So you you kind of wonder, you know. Yeah. And then you can just kind of ask them questions, you know, and just see, uh, not accusing them questions, just, you know, hey, uh, have you ever thought about joining a church or uh what do you think of the word and would you like to do some Bible study? And if they have no interest in, you know, there's, there's a danger, danger sign there, I guess. So, cause you're well, going to, you're going to be changed. Right. So we're on a, uh, we're at our time right now, but I want to before, and then we can read the, that last paragraph tomorrow. But I think I'm going to tell you what I think about evangelism. I think, we all have evangelism in our heart or yeah I'll, I'll say that we all have evangelism i think though it just looks different based on our personalities so i think i think your evangelism looks different than my evangelism which looks different than another christian evangelism i believe that the lord uses our personalities He'll use our person, you know, what, you know, mine's more, I guess I'm more outgoing or I'm more, uh, or I just care less about what people think of me in the long run. So mine's more personal face to face. And I just think other people's evangelism is different based on their personality and the Lord works within those things. So I believe evangelism is for every Christian, but I believe it also looks differently for every christian so it doesn't have to be evangelism doesn't have to be my way of doing it i'm not trying to make my thing your thing and i'm not saying you jim davis i'm just saying you christians in general i just think it looks different for every christian so it doesn't have to be you either evangelize face to face in the street or you're doing you're doing it wrong I don't believe the I I don't believe it's that black and white. I believe the Lord uses our our 
personalities and the things and our interests. And then we evangelize where we're at. What do you think, Jim? That's true. But if you look at the list of gifts of the spirit, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm trying to find it right now, but, um, uh, you know, one gift is a, the gift of, a, of an evangelist. So some people do have that gift. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. No. Uh, and some people have the gift of teaching, which, yep. you know, some people have the gift of, uh, basically shepherding, pastoring. Uh, hopefully you have both. If you're a pastor, some people are good teachers, but they're not, they're not called to be a pastor, you know? So yeah, some people have a, have a gift, the gift of evangelism, but we we're all supposed to be, you know, I, I just go back to, you know, don't look at everybody as a target, you know, okay, this, you know, this person, this person needs to be a Christian, you know, you love people first. And then now if you're going out and doing street evangelism, obviously you're still going to love that person, but you have a purpose of doing that. Right. Yeah. But in your day to day life, your neighbors, your, your family members, I'm going to love that person like Christ told me to love them. And then when they ask me, usually, why are you doing this for me? Or why, you know, why do you love me so much? Or whatever the, re whatever they say, whatever they see in you, they're going to say, what is, what is different about you? And if they're your family, they're probably going to know, but oh, they should know, put yeah. your neighbors and stuff. And then, yeah, then you can tell them about Christ. So, um, I just, I just don't like it when people look at people as if they're, if they're, if they're some kind of a target, you know? Right, for sure. I got to convert. I got. I got to convert this person, type thing, you know. So, so uh, we're commanded to love, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and then, um, obviously, if you're in prayer for people, and you're asking God to save them, He's going to give you the opportunity. If and if they are the if they are elect, He's going to give you the opportunity to share, and then. I think also, you know, when you share with people that they are not elected, the the word is also it can you know is is also judging judging toward them. They can never say they have never heard the gospel, you know. Right. So the 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 word cuts both ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> sad to you know sad to say that, but it and does cut both ways. In Hebrews, I think that, is that in Hebrews, the, the word of God is like a. A sharp double-edged two-edged sword or something like that. Yeah, Cutting through the bone marrow. Sword. Yeah. Cutting through. So, and some people it's going to cut them to where they they reach out to Christ, and some people it's going to harden their hearts. And um, obviously, if they're not elect, they can't believe. But and then that's that. You know, I mean, look at the prophets in the Old Testament. You know, mm -hmm. Jeremiah. God told him. I want you to go out basically for the rest of your life and talk to my people, but they're not going to, they're not going to respond. <laughs> he knew it before he even went out there that they weren't going to respond, but he told them to do it anyway. So they can never say to, to God, we never heard, you know, no one ever warned us. No one told us. And then Paul says, you know, that he has to, you know, Paul, there's a couple of times where Paul said, I had, you know, I have to, I have to tell people, and if I do, then the blood's not on my hands anymore. It's on theirs. So he was constrained to spread the gospel, but he knew that there were people that weren't going to respond to it, but but it, but he was not guilty of not doing it. So, you know, so no matter what, if people believe the gospel or not, it doesn't, you know, that's what I'm trying to say is that if someone doesn't respond to the gospel, you don't stop loving them. You know, you don't say, okay, I'm done with you. Obviously you don't have to keep evangelizing them, but you are, you are commanded to keep loving them because they are, they are created in the image of God. So, um, you don't stop loving even if they, uh, you can stop even, you know, like Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine. So if you have someone that doesn't want to hear it, then don't, you know, just stop talking about it. But it doesn't say you can't stop. It never says you can stop loving somebody. So if they come to you and they need something, then you help them, no matter what, right. whether they hate the gospel or not. That's not for us to judge, you know. That's the only thing I'm guarding against is that some people, when someone doesn't respond, they get angry at them or whatever and say, I'm done with you. I'm not going to help you anymore. Well, it could good, be a family yeah. member. It could be a friend. It could be a neighbor, whoever it is, you know. 
I think there's a certain level of maturity in everything we do, right? That's why I say, you know, I, I, I don't make my thing your thing. There's, there's always a certain level of maturity. Just because it's the way I do it doesn't mean it's the way you have to do it. And then if you don't do it that way, then you're sinning. Of course not. There's always a certain level of maturity. I just, I, I, I believe what the Bible says where it says, you know, we're all just different members. We're all different members of the body. You know, some people are hands, some people are feet, some people are toes, you know. I just, but I do believe every one of those has a hint of evangelism in it. And based on our personal personalities, the Lord will use that. You know, I just happen to be one of those people who love the interaction. And like and I said before, whether they get saved or not is above my pay grade. I just like, I just, because the, I don't see people as targets. I see people as, I've been, like you said, you know, I just want to share with them what the Lord has done for me. And ultimately, if they choose to, if they choose to deny Christ, they are going to hell for eternity. Right. It's, it's not like, you know, it's not like I'm sharing the good news of a Tesla with them. And the worst case scenario, they have to use petrol in their car. That's the, you know, we're talking about eternity and hell. And it's like, man, that's that's the consequence of denying Christ is eternity. You are choosing hell over 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 Christ because you don't want to be told what to do or you don't want uh, God to make a decisions for you or you want to live life on your terms or you love your sin. You are choosing hell in eternity for that. That is the consequence of your action. So I don't necessarily right. see them as targets so much as, man. No, I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying yeah. That, yeah, it could be some people could think like that. Right. And and uh but you have, you know, you, you it's like a pastor, right? Nobody has a business nobody should be in the business of being a pastor unless they feel that calling so right. strong on their heart, right? You don't yeah. have that calling. Not I don't have all. that calling. <laughs> I don't care if I memorize the whole Bible and I memorized all these th theology books, I am not called to be a pastor. I guarantee it. And if I did it, I'd be foolish and I would fail. Right. Right. And some people, like I said, and if you're, if you have that call to be an evangelist and that's pulling you, then that's obviously you have it. You know, I'm more of a, of a, uh, if I say something about church, you know, just out of the blue, you know, I'm at, I'm at physical therapy and I say, well, uh, you know, I like to work out every day. I like to exercise every day except for, you know, the Sabbath, because that's what that's, that's, that's for worshiping God and uh, attending church services, something little like that. And then if they're interested, you know, and they want to talk about it, then, uh, you know, we go further or I just say, God bless you to somebody. I mean, just something to, to just, you know, at the store, you know, at the, the, the checkout stand or whatever yeah. it is, or somebody, somebody, uh, open the door for you. Thank, thank you very much. God bless you. You know, and, uh, you know, if it's, if they're interested, you know, and then, you know, I'm not much of the uh, street evangelist kind of person, but, uh, you know, um, yeah, so real quick, Ephesians 4, uh, we've got, uh, and he gave, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. So. Uh, until we attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So even the evangelist is to equip the saints, basically to be, you know, to be evangelists also. So, excuse me. So, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, I've always, <laughs> I still wonder what my gifts are, but, uh, I'm more of a one-on-one -on -one or maybe a one-on-two type person. I like to discuss things, but I, I don't want to, I have very little experience in actually like doing a class or something like that. You know, I've done right. it a few times, but not very often. I, I'm kind of a nervous person and when I get in front of a group of people, <laughs> so it's like one-on-one -on -one type stuff and uh one-on-two, maybe me and a couple of guys talking or whatever. So I still wonder sometimes what my gifts are, but. I do love to study and uh, and discuss with st with people, but I feel like I'm 
I kind of feel unequipped to be like a teacher teacher. So um, we'll see. You know, you never know. Well, I think we're um, doing something now. Right. I mean, I'm, I feel like. I go into it like I'm talking to have a conversation with you. The fact that it's recorded right. is something, you know, but I'm talking to you uh, for the most part. We're just discussing these things. But obviously there are times when, you know, we talk about things that, that uh, in general, like, like we were talking about, you know, don't look at people like I'm not talking to you. I know you're not, I know you're not like that, but don't talk to people like you don't treat people like they're targets. Right. For evangelism, right. you know? Yeah. And so that's a general thing, which, yeah. So yeah, that's not, out of the, con right. that's out of the context of just me and you talking. I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk to you like that. Right. Because I know you're not like that. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, most of these points I bring up are just for, like you said, the general people who may be listening. Right. You know, this, I'm more comfortable doing this than standing in front of a hundred people or 50 people or even 20 and trying to give a lesson because I, I just don't feel comfortable doing right. it. I don't like it when everybody's staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? I'd rather be anonymous, a mominous anonymity. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So anyway, we, we all have the, yeah, you know, I mean, what was the last thing Christ said to the disciples before he ascended into heaven? Go into all the world, make disciples. Yes. He didn't say Mike, he didn't say make converts, which is part of it, obviously, but make disciples, teaching them all the things that uh, I've commanded you, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we need to invest, which is another thing I have a hard time with, is investing in other people. From start to finish, you know, not just converting and running off. It's investing, investing, making disciples, which takes time. Right. So. All right. That was a good one, sir. Okay. So for those of you who are still listening, that was chapter seven, God's covenant, paragraph one and two. We will be doing our next one will be paragraph three, and then we'll be getting into chapter eight, Christ the Mediator. So yeah, it's going good, sir. I, I really appreciate this. So I will pray us out unless you have anything else to add. No, yeah, we'll uh, we'll finish this off uh, tomorrow, and uh, God willing, paragraph three, and. Uh, some good stuff in that paragraph to mull over. You know, I I, uh, I think we were the last two people to meet at our men's group, or what did they call it? Uh, not men's group. What was Gospel it? community group. Yeah, I think we G -G -G. were the because you were there first. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know who you came before or after, but I was the last one in. And when I joined, we, it was Chad. It was Nick running it, Chad and and uh, Troy, and that was it. Okay. And then Jonathan came me, later. They put they put me in that one because there were only three of them. That was the newest group, so they stuck me. They put me in that one. They stuck me in there. They put me in that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting group. Anyway, uh, yeah, and then uh, I think you came, and then Jonathan came, right? Okay. So yeah, yeah, we, we didn't. We went to the same church for I don't know how long. Could have been six months. I don't know. I don't know. And I kind I'd seen you, but I had no idea who you were. Yeah, it wasn't until you joined the group. You know, you brought me. I had surgery on my neck, and you you brought me some food, and but I was I didn't even answer the door at that time. Yeah, I and, volunteered uh, my mom to bring you food. <laughs> yeah. I think I met her the second time she brought food, but I didn't. I don't think I met her the first time. I think I was sleeping or something. So it was just a few days after the surgery. But then the you know the name the name came and I, and I was trying to put a name to a face. You know, I was trying to figure out who you were in the church in the congregation that 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 I didn't know, and I kind of had a feeling. 
you know, I'm thinking Hispanic, right? Reyes. <laughs> <laughs> there weren't that many Hispanic people in the car, in the church. So, right. But yeah, then you joined the group and then, uh, and then it went from there. Well, you helped me a lot, you know, when I was, when I was getting ready to move out here. So that, that kind of, uh, moved from California to South Carolina. So that, that was a big, uh, first you and Troy were going to do that YouTube thing. And then that didn't work out. And then we started talking about stuff and then, yeah, we became better, better acquainted stuff. So then we started doing lunches and stuff and yeah, I don't know if you, were you before Jonathan or after? I was, I don't remember. He wasn't, he, he wasn't there when we were at Nick's house. I remember him at Chad's place. I think you were before Jonathan. Okay. So you weren't the last one, but you were, yeah. Or maybe Jonathan was working or something. He was officially part of the group, but he wouldn't, he wasn't showing up because he wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't always there. Yeah. He wasn't there regularly. And what's funny is you move away. Everybody else is still here, but I do talk to you. I talk to you what we talk like four days a week at least. Well, doing this, yeah. Yeah. Probably more than that. Probably five or six days a week. But yeah, and I don't talk to regularly. I don't talk to anybody. Um, Chad every now and then when he breaks, you know, he breaks in on us and we're playing a game or something. Yeah. And, uh, I don't think there's anyone there that I even keep in contact with texting or talking to. There are only a couple of people where I used to work when I worked there for 20 years <laughs> that I keep in contact <laughs> with. So yeah, it's a, uh, and I don't know that many people out here. I mean, people I go to church with, so, and we don't, we don't talk much outside of church. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so praise the Lord. Definitely, definitely the most regular, regular re, uh, re, uh, relationship that I have. Yeah, I think it's mostly. I think it's a lot of it's the gaming aspect of it. Because when I met you, I had I had you know I had gamed a, a little bit when I was younger, and then <clears throat> that's you know we're talking forties, my forties, not my teens or twenties. That stuff wasn't around when I was that age. But I had I had stopped doing that, and then uh, somehow we were talking about it one time, and I ended up getting a computer. And remember when I first got the first the computer I had, it wouldn't run. It was Def- old. It wouldn't run yeah. Division Two, you know. Oh yeah, that's right. And that was an old game already too. It would run Destiny. Right. And then and then uh, it wasn't until I got here that I bought a new computer so I could play all the games and everything, but. Yeah, I remember us talking about whether you should get an Xbox or a computer. I'm glad you went with the computer, though. Well, the computer to me is more versatile. I can do other right. things. I can, right. I can, I can do my banking. I can do email, whatever. Yeah. Though I don't use it that often for that kind of stuff. I use my iPad almost for everything except for. Uh, so I pretty much just use my computer now for this. And uh, playing games. And that's it. <laughs> my actual PC. And uh, my iPad, I can do, I can take it anywhere. You know, I can do my stuff in a recliner. I don't have to sit here at my desk, you know. All right. So for everyone listening, we are recording this uh, via computer. But Jim and I are actually on FaceTime together. So uh, when we can read read off each other, it makes it for a better podcast, I feel. When I actually see uh, Jim's silver, yeah, when I see Mike, face. when I see Mike, when I see Mike staring at the ceiling, I'm like, oh, I better keep talking. <laughs> I think Mike did it mostly to see what I'm doing. He's like, what are you doing, man? We got this long break. <laughs> You're not saying anything. It does make it easier though. Uh, and all he right. starts throwing me, throwing me these, these signs, hand signs. He's doing American sign language at me, like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> yeah, first there were gang signs, but I was like, oh, he hasn't been in any gangs. He doesn't know. 
Then turn into ASL. Oh, man. That's funny. All right, sir. I'm going to price out. All right. Thanks, everybody. For, uh, this isn't part of it yet, but thank you, everybody, who uh, stayed this long. We appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you. Maybe you're uh, Christians and either you're more mature than us or not as mature. We hopefully this will this will help you. OK. Father God, Lord Jesus, come before you and thank you. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for um, uh, choosing us to be the elect, Lord Jesus. Thank you for my friendship with Jim, Lord Jesus. Thank you for allowing us to stay in touch. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, thank you for... Um, thank you for all that you, you've blessed me with, Lord Jesus. Um, I consider Jim a true friend, Lord Jesus, and I thank you for that. Um, if uh, those of you who don't necessarily have friends out there, um, you feel alone, please write to, please write in if that's you. Uh, we can go through scripture together and go through scripture to help you memorize. That Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through him. Yeah. True. Go ahead, Jim. Oh, no, I just... Uh, yeah, Father, we uh, thank you for these truths that we are learning about... Uh, your covenant of grace, which is basically all we have I mean, as far as uh, a relationship with you. Adam and Eve had a perfect relationship with you. They communed with, with you daily in the garden, and they lost it. And Christ has come to restore it. We thank you that we are able to come to you any time of the day or night through your Son, by the Holy Spirit. We don't have to wait like the Israelites in the Old Testament one day a year and the, the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. We can speak to you directly. That is such a privilege. Help us not to take that for granted. Help us to always be thankful and grateful to be your servants and to not expect anything and to know that we don't do anything that you, we have nothing in need and you are we you are not beholding to us for anything everything we have is mercy and grace friendships and health and we have plenty to eat we have roofs roofs over our head our heads and we are def we are truly blessed yeah thank you lord yeah. Um, please bless this podcast. Please use it to um, call those of you, call those who are uh, the elect, Lord Jesus. Please continue to use us and uh, give us the give us the knowledge and wisdom to convey your word, Lord. In your name, we ask. Amen. Amen. And as always, Ephesians five fifteen. Therefore, look carefully how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Nice. Got him. Nice. Be careful, you could revive. He was trying to beat on me. Try to revive us. You got the medic vest. Revive one of us. Yeah. I think we're okay. <laughs> get stuck on the thing up there. Yeah, oh. they're together. Yeah. Oh, man. 
there was another. There was another one of them. That's not the guy I killed. Nah, that guy was just holding out to hold out. Yeah, see, that's the guy that. I think that's the guy that got you. He was right below me, and I couldn't see him from the roof. I can see bullets flying towards you. Oh well. You want to try to get revived? Ultra one, you were close to survival streak. Redeployment is standing by. Ah. because he could hear me shooting. That was brutal. That's the name of the game. That's where I thought somebody was shooting you guys from. I could see bullets, but I couldn't see a person, so I figured they must be in the building. <laughs> I didn't have any grenades or anything here. That I could toss down the, uh... Yeah, it is what it is. Toss Perfect. down the, uh, stairs or anything. Oh, I lost my weapons. Okay. Got an Akaris. My contraband. <laughs> Guys, too. Second time we, we couldn't. There was no scavenger on the whole map that I could see. Uh, you even had it. You even activated a UAV. Yeah. Oh, that was way back. Was that before we moved? I thought it was after we moved. That was that was before. That's how we got caught up in all this. All right. I wish it was still going. It would have showed me where he was. <laughs> Here is a schedule for Sunday, October 1st. We will hold our congressional, congregational retreats so there will be no worship services or events this Sunday. Uh, I gotta find a service for Sunday morning. Yeah, that was a good one. I have nothing. I have no qualms about that last fight. Yeah, it was all fair and fair. Fair enough. I, I just, there. I just didn't know the guy was there. He, yeah. he was very, very patient. Oh yeah. He knew I was there because he could hear me shooting. He just kept waiting for me to think the coast was clear, and then. Don't get me, bummer. After this game, I'm going to switch to my PlayStation. All right. The way I sit in this computer room, my back toward, is toward every single door. Oh, yeah. Welcome to Al -Mazra. Explore security I know I have the dogs, but to gain access to I'd rather see it coming. Enemy threat is high, so expect contact. Yeah. No signs of the scavenger. I will follow wherever you may go. Do I sound like some teachers?
shot. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, young man. The TTK is a lot more this uh, this update, like the time to kill. There's one. <laughs> I found it. I blew myself up. Michael? What, what's up? What were you saying about TTK? Oh, the time to kill the AI seems like more, a lot more. Oh, they, they seem like they're all heavily armored. Yeah, it does, huh? I'm glitching a little bit. I'm like going one way and then I'm over somewhere else. So I don't know if that's bad news or what. You going north? Oh, uh, sure. Is that you? Behind, behind me, behind me. tempted to reload I'm like I got plenty of rounds. <laughs> nothing in this place. Nothing. You get nothing, nothing in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I beat you to it. Going up the stairs. I guess we can go to the port. Duffel. Nothing. Dang it. Don't finish it, don't finish it, don't finish it. I'm here. I got a guy behind the bush. To your left, to your left. Unless I'm seeing things. Thanks for the vehicle. We appreciate it. Train, train, train.
this whole thing's already been needed. I need mid cow round. I thought you did all the time. You're fast. No, it wasn't me. They didn't, they didn't bother with the safe, I guess. Enemy UAV overhead, too. Be careful. Have those tunnels? Yeah. Wouldn't those? Wouldn't that be where those? I mean, that are the Coney tunnels? Right? Let's small. try it. I'm off. Come on. Yeah, I'm on. Big guy. Talking to somebody. He was talking to somebody. I'm here. I'm here. Hi, Mongolia. Operator is near your location and requesting medical. Hello, man. Yeah. 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 Rocket launchers down. Revive 
Remember that? Ultra One, actual. That intel is nuclear material stored in the area. I need you to secure and extract that material. Look at your attack map. I will shut you, Luke. I will, would have been okay. I will, would have been okay. You're doing hurt. You're doing hurt. Oh, that sounds like a table saw. Oh, that sounds like a table saw. Reload, reload, reload. <laughs> guys in here, Mike. Guys in here, Mike. Bots or players? Bots or players? Disguise. Disguise. Oh, disguise. Nice. Oh, disguise. Nice. Right there. Right there. All right, it is Dode, sir. All right, it is Dode, sir. Fine job. My English is very bad. Spanish. Spanish. No Spanish. No Spanish. Oh, sorry. All right. That's it. Right. 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 English. If you find a scavenger, you find a scavenger let us know. Guys over here in the shield. Find a vehicle, let me know. Find a vehicle, let me know. Oh, we got a bunch of guys dying. Oh, we got a bunch of guys dying. Yeah, there's several, there's, hundred, there's meters several hundred meters away, though. Of course, it is. He's pinned. Oh, I'm down. Oh, I'm down. Where are you? Oh, I'm coming. No. I'm getting, oh, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm getting up. I'm getting whacked. Oh, I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Oh, I'm down again. Man, I oh, I'm down again. Man, I cannot. There are bots first. There are bots first. Everywhere. I got self revive. I got self revive. He has a contract. Take it if you want it. I'll try to get you, Mike. Try to get you, Mike.
Shotgun. Our partner's nowhere near us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Oh, my Play got taken. Oh, my two play got Need to get to an extra. Yeah. Tomate los primes ahí ya para mandar una saga, una gran, pero una de las grandes para Behind you, behind you, Jim, behind you. Behind you, behind you, Jim, behind you.
Next bill. Next bill. I'm hanging around a building. I'm on my way to the next bill. I'm on my way to the next bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
Behind you, Jim. Behind you. Behind you, Jim. Behind you. Enemy vehicle. Enemy vehicle. Get up, Jim. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up, Jim. Get up. Get up. Get up. Shoot him. Shoot him. Get up. Shoot him. Shoot him. GG, sir. GG, sir. Oh, he almost had him. Oh, he almost had him. Oh, I was almost out of ammo. We got one more. We got one more truck. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, one guy flew out of that car like, like a jet. Like a jet, man. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought it was some kind of glitch. Glitch. Getting on the hill. Getting on the hill, Captain. Guard it. Guard it. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll start that up here, finally. Woo-hoo! Yeah, perfect. We'll start that up here, finally, you're done, Marty. Oh, well, no. That's what I'm saying, man. That was close. That was close. Thank you. Yeah, it was. Thank you, man.